So let's discuss now on monetary policies and the physical policy. Fine. Now, what is the objective of a government? Very simple. Government aims at to rise the equality of living of every citizen. So that means poor should get rich and richer should not become too much rich. So both should have fair chance to grow into the economy. So every citizen must live happy. So that is the objective. So for that a fair distribution of money is very important. So to achieve that goal, okay, so economic policy makers have two tools. Okay, these tools helps in, you know, moving the economy. So one is the fiscal policy and another one is the monetary policy. And what is fiscal policy? A fiscal policy relates to government spending and revenue collections. So that means related to government budgets. So when you know basically when the demand is low into the economy, okay, so government steps in and increases its expenditures. So when government you know increases expenditure, they have higher government expenditure budget. Uh, they, they, they have more, you know, projects, uh, they have more jobs and uh, they, you know, infuse more money into the system. So if this happens, there's money with everybody, they become consumer, then the producers make profit, they establish new business, they hire new people, hire new people, can get more jobs, more salaries, more expenditure. So economy rotates. So another option could be like instead of increasing the expenditure, they can lower down the taxes. So if government reduces the taxes, the people have more disposable income. So they spend more, they go on party, they buy luxurious items, they have out dinner, outside lunch, outside, they wear new clothes, they spend more on education, they more spend more on clothes, everything. So what happens is basically your you know, economy moves on, there's more expenditure, so your GDP increases. Fiscal policy is normally controlled by Ministry of Finance in India and Treasury Security and Congress in the United States. Okay, so here if we have low demand, lower the taxes or increase the, that will increase the basically disposable income and that will lead to increased demand. Or what you can do is you increase the government expenditure. So if you increase the government expenditure or reduce the lower, you know, taxes, if you do both, you can do that also. In that situation, that will lead to, you know, business increase, you know, employment, jobs, GDP increase and all, basically. So that's something which you can also do to steer the economy. But if you lower the taxes and if you increase the government expenditure, there could be a big budget deficit because the revenues will become less if you reduce the taxes. And if you increase the government expenditures, so expenditures are high. So lower income, higher expenditure that will have higher budget deficit. And in that situation, the government might need to take loan loan from by issuing government bonds to public or maybe to the Fed Reserve or the RBI, the central bank. So that's a bad option. So this has to be very much balanced. Now there are two types of fiscal policies. One is like to, you know, 
to focus on higher economic growth. So we call it expansionary economic policies. And another one is to control the overheated economy, which is due to normally higher inflation. So this is called contractionary, you know, economic policy. Contractionary, you know, economic policies. So to increase the demand, you know, if increasing demand is there in the economy, so that will rise in inflation. So lower spending and higher taxes and that will increase the increase surplus and reduces the inflation. Now, then we have monetary policies. Now, monetary policy normally direct relates to the supply of money, which is controlled by factors such as interest rates and reserve requirements, or you can say the cash reserve ratio, CRR, for banks. So, for example, let's say if there's too much of, you know, high inflation into the system. The central bank, that means the Fed Reserve or the IBI, can rise the interest rates and thereby reducing the money supply and reducing the demand. So, that will control the inflation. Now, so what are the tools we use? Normally, interest rates. So basically, the, what RBI does, so RBI has two tools in terms of interest rate. There are many others, but these are most famous. So one is repo rate, another one is reverse repo rate. So repo rate is the rate, the interest rate basically, uh, which the central bank, at which uh, the central bank normally lends money to the commercial bank. So this is the interest rate of loan, which is given by the central bank to the commercial banks. So normally when you hear in the news the RBI or Fed Reserve has increased the interest rate, that means they are increasing the repo rate directly. So which leads to high you know, interest cost for commercial banks and they increase the commercial loan rates also and inflation reduces. And then reverse repo rate, at this rate, bank lends money to the central bank. So if the RBI or Fed Reserve needs money on loan, Okay, so this will be the loan which will be charged by a commercial bank, okay, for the reserve banks. So after these interest rates, which controls the inflation, uh, you normally increase the interest rate and reduce the inflation. The second tool for uh, the uh, the central bank is mon uh, controlling inflation through the cash reserve ratio. Normally banks are required to hold a certain percentage of their deposits and most liquid form, that means cash to normally meet the cash withdrawal request of the depositors, otherwise there would be a default. So these reserves percentages are normally known as the cash reserve ratio. So if you increase the cash reserve ratio, uh, you know, thousand crores are, you know, with the, 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 the remains with this bank in liquid form. So these does not go into the system and that, uh, you know, reduces the money supply into the system and controls the inflation. And then the last tool is open market operations. Now the Fed or the RBI can create money out of thin air, which means they can print electronic money. You know, do dig 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 ten billion dollars into one account. So they can do that. They don't even have to print the hard currency, paper currency. To do, transfer that money into bank account. And bank will issue a bond, an electronic bond that I'm taking loan from RBI or the Fed Reserve and will pay back at this interest rate when they will generate revenue into the system from taxes and all. So that's how the government debt keeps on increasing because they have easy loan from the Fed or the RBI. And they spent like anything and the debt is keep on increasing. Free money. But actually that is on the cost of increasing inflation. So, 
I don't know why they are using it, but I don't like it. I, I am not great into economics, but one simple mathematics I don't understand. So let's suppose uh, you are taking a 10 rupees loan from the uh, Fed okay, to give it to public. And what happens is public goes to you know buy a product which was previously 100 rupees now it is 110 so the extra money you are getting is going into inflation now what is the benefit of taking too much of debt from you know the I'm sorry do debt too much of debt from the RBI and give it to public and public buy at a higher inflation rate so they are eventually or virtually they are not buying at a lower price. There is the same money they are spending. And you are with a debt which you never going to pay. So people say that inflation is not too much, uh, you know, that does, does not go too much as much the government is expending. But yes, instantly the inflation will not rise. But in a later course of time, couple of years, couple of months, that will lead to higher inflation and increased price in the economy. Taking that and then you are spending, so you're infusing new money, that will increase inflation. But yes, if there is taxes, you take money from taxes instead of taking debt. So that means old money is going to the uh, government and then government is spending. See, if the old money is going to the government and that is means spending back to the public. So you take tax from public and they will get back, give that back money in form of subsidies and expenditures and all. So there's no new money into the system. The inflation remains constant or get, get down. <laughs> so both policies have different impact. Higher debt, higher expenditure, higher GDP but higher inflation, higher interest rate, poor people, unhappy people, people with a lot of debt on their head. God bless. Okay, so open market operations, very simple. Fed creates money, government buy bonds, FDI is bond, you know, government issues bonds, get money, spend, increase inflation and then people think government is spending too much. Okay, so this was about the monetary policies.